it's time for you to plunge in. The switch to your next level starts now. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six.
Evening. My name is Lady T and I'm going to be your host for this evening. Um, listen, make some noise for the Next Level Prayer Conference 2022.
blows up expectations. How many people have got the expectations already tonight? If you haven't, I would like you to take this moment just to think about it. You can't be in the garden like this and not expect God to move. Amen? Because we've got something better that we could be doing, but we're here. And I believe that God is going to meet every one of the questions that needs in Jesus' name. So uh, we are the workers of the house. Has everyone got the expectations? Because we've been told beforehand to get it ready. Can I see all the workers? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I think my, I'm really lucky because my expectations actually got met before this conference. So whatever you've come from, I believe God is going to do it for you today. So please come with a hope of heart. You're going to be here to have your spirit. It's going to be, um, it's going to be strengthened. You're going to be on fire. I believe you go for instant miracles. We've seen it in previous AMP gatherings, and we're expecting God to do something like that tonight. So please keep your faith up. Keep your faith up. I'm believing for long-standing issues to be met today. So if you've got issues, just put, if you've got doubts, put them aside. Bring on your heart of faith. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's have all our faith stand up. I'm just going to quickly go and share my testimony of what God has done for me. So prior to NLP, as I said, um, Pastor Bologi advised us during our meeting to get our letter of um, expectations ready. It was three. And uh, I think my first one was, we're trying to move again. So it was one of those charities where... We wanted to move, but we did not have money. <laughs> and as greedy as we were, we thought, you know what, let's go to the bank. And the bank offered to give us an agreement in principle. And so when we started looking at our sales, uh, we, we went to the first broker that we had, and he said, oh, you need the 10% deposit. And we said, oh, yes, we do have it. But we did it as well. So by the time it came time to put it down, we we're believing God, you know, that we we're believing God for miracles, for funding. And because I joined NLP every time online, and we're, at that time, we're praying for approvals. We're praying for, and so we're praying for uh, protocols being, you know, overridden. And we told the estate agent to say, you know what? Can you go back to the developers and tell them if they will accept a five percent deposit? And the lady said, but you knew it was ten percent. Yes. But can you please go and ask for us? And they did. And lo and behold, the developers agreed for a five percent raise. And we did not have anywhere to get the money from again. We did not have the five percent because. We were thinking of, because we currently own our home, so all of our funds were tied up in our property. So we do have it, but we don't have it right now. So we went back to them, we called, the first contact we called, again agreed to give us the money that we needed. So we're like, okay, that's amazing. Then we, found, we passed the first order, and then they referred us to the mortgage advisors, and the broker was like, okay, let's do all your checks, and then we found out that our papers are actually in the home office. So we couldn't do IDs as well. And at that time, we were getting scared. And the lady was like, you know they're not going to give you anything? And we said, yes, but we actually got our papers in for indefinitely to be made. So you can't give us the rates for normal, you know, visa status, because our status has changed, we're at the next level. And he said, yeah, well, what they will do is um, they will tell you that until the papers come, they will give us a close. And we said, okay, fine, just go ask the bank, you know. This time we are praying and praying and praying. And the bank came back, our papers are not yet up. They didn't give us any clothes at all. After some more deliberation back and forth with the underwriters, the bank offered to give us the loan that we needed without no waiting for our papers to come out at all. So it was just miracles. We had so much others, but I think constantly joining into NLP made our faith stronger. I mean, so maybe some of the ones like, so what do we think we would do? I'm like, don't worry, I'm going to go and pray. Like, keep praying, keep praying. <laughs> you know, God is going to do wonders. And I kept praying, like the good woman that I am. And every door, every order, one after the other. There's so many hurdles that we have to go through. But at the end of the day, we got everything right before time. So I just want to give God all the glory. Just to let you know, tonight, there is so much power on this altar. There is fire. There is grace. So please, get your energy up. If you haven't written your expectations, I'm not sure what you're waiting for. Please, get it done now. Please, please, I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds to think about what you're here for. There's no point in Bible says, the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut off. You can't be here and not be expectant. So please, I want to take off, as I said, two of my expectations that we met. I've only got one more, and that's what my brother and I prayed for. I've added more things of my expectations, believing that God is going to do it. So please, take it seriously. Write your letters of congratulations. Be expectant. There is power in your house. The Holy Spirit is here. It's going to move mightily. Trust God to do everything that you have asked Him to do. Amen. Please give a round of applause for that testimony. God is going to break protocols for you, amen? Amen. Is he going to break protocols for you? Yes. Amen. So right now, as she
actually said, look, if you have your phones on you, um, I just really encourage you to write down the prayers that you want because today is the day that you are going to mark the UK into Next Level Conference 2022 in London and you received your miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I'd all like you to rise up with me right now uh, because I would like to invite um, someone special on stage. Um, I mean, I saw her today. She's amazing. She's beautiful. She's got like, she's so swagalicious. Um, but she is uh, uh, an amazing woman inside her heart with a hot, strong heart for God. And please welcome, welcome. Are you ready? Okay, you guys at the top, what are you doing? Come on, get up, 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 everybody up, everybody up. We need the energy, okay? I need you to encourage us. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage, Pastor Mo. of God. Hallelujah. And God is already here. Praise God. God is already here. Bible speaks of a woman who had the issue of blood. Bible says she was bent over for how many years? How many years? 18 years. Bible says she was bent over for 18 years. But she heard that Jesus was coming somewhere and she came. Praise God. This morning, I just want to talk about your, this evening rather, <laughs> I just want to talk about your expectations. She heard that Jesus was coming and she came, but guess what? She didn't wait for Jesus to call her name. Bible says she proposed in her heart. She decided, and I'm saying this because as, you, as you've come here today, it's not a function of what Pastor Bolaji wants to see. It's a function of where your faith is. Is a function of what your heart has decided. That as I've come here today, I'm not going back the same. Bible says, I have this confidence that today I will see the goodness of God. That's what the scriptures say. Don't say amen. I'm speaking it for myself. Speak it for yourself if you believe it. The woman said, if I may but touch the hem, just the tip of his garment, I will be healed. What have you come here with? this evening. This woman was bent over for 18 years. Some of us, it's been longer than that. Some of us, it's, it's you know, shorter than that. But it doesn't matter how long. It doesn't matter how long. We serve a father who is a God of all possibilities. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 5, it says they looked unto him and they were lightened. They just looked unto him. Bible says they were lightened. It means that they're, it means many things. It says that they were lightened. Their burdens were taking off. It says that the, 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 the yoke was destroyed because of the anointing. Just because they looked unto God. Not just that. The Bible says that and their faces were not ashamed. As you've come here tonight, I declare over you in the name of Jesus that your face will not be ashamed. Oh, 
footstool, the almighty God. Bible says there's no turning in him. He doesn't change, he doesn't falter. He's a constant God. And he says that no good will he withhold from us. Bible says he's given us all things that pertains to life and to godliness. So there is nothing that we don't already have. Today, all we've come to do is what? To Catalan Bano. What does that mean? It means take by force. Hallelujah. And how do you take by force? With your faith. As instructions come tonight, if they say lift up your hands, make sure your hands are lifted up. Close your eyes, make sure your eyes are closed. With your heart, commune, because God will be speaking with each and every one of us tonight. Hallelujah. Bible says that the expectations of the righteous will not be cut short. Amen. How many of us are ready to receive tonight? I don't see your hands up. Hallelujah. I declare that tonight is your night in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Ben. I just want to recognize all those at the top. I feel a bit distant from you guys. All right, if you're at the top right now, I need you to shout hallelujah right now. Shout hallelujah for those at the top. I like it. I like it. All right, can you guys at the bottom, can you do better? Can you do better? All right, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it going to be? That's right. That is right. That is right. You know what my pastor always says? A closed mouth is a closed destiny. So tonight, you need to make sure that your mouth is open. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to watch another testament. Tonight is going to be filled with testimonies and lots of prayers. So make sure that your heart is opened and you're ready to receive. Let's play the video. Thank you. Amen. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? NLP, isn't God good? Hallelujah. Join us as we continue to declare the greatness of this good God. So we're going to start just by saying how great, how amazing is this God. You're the name.
don't pay you do it. You know, sometimes I don't even argue with people. You know when people talk to people and they say, oh, you know, God isn't real, he doesn't do much. I'm like, really? I, I, I refuse to argue with people anymore. I refuse because people just, they fear the unknown, but we know the known. We know the known heals. We know the known saves because God is our creator. He is our healer. Amen? Amen. Okay, so I have another testimony to read for you. I mean, I pray that I do this justice. So, bear with me. Okay, it says, good morning, Pastor B and all NLP members. I am here to testify of the goodness of God. I live in Canada and was diagnosed of nose cancer in June 2021. And the doctor said it's in stage four because it had spread to my body, to my liver and my breast area. I was given a few weeks to live and a big tumor sprung out in my mouth, which made it difficult for me to talk, eat or breathe. Since I can't breathe with my nose, I was rushed to the ER to get an emergency tracheotomy so I can breathe. The very first day the doctors told me about the news, I told them that was not God's report for me. Before then, my sis in the UK usually sends me NLP every day persistently, but one day, one day, I decided to pray along and I enjoyed every single moment. In that same month, I told my sister about my diagnosis and we started praying together concerning the situation. In July, on July the 1st, I started my chemotherapy. For once then, on July 29th, 2021, Pastor prayed for cancer patients and I caught my healing rhema. I was holding on to God's word. My sister tried getting in touch with Pastor B because I told her, if he prays for me, I will be healed. August 7th, during the UK Connect, my sister invited me to join the Zoom meeting and God, and as God will have it, my case was called. And Pastor B prayed for me on that platform. He asked me to do 21 days of Thanksgiving whilst on my hospital bed because before then, the doctors had already said I had a few weeks to live, so they wanted to transfer me to the palliative ward, which is the end of life ward. I insisted I am going home. And they were all amazed. They stopped giving me treatment, but as God will have it, after those prayers, I started getting healthy. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. It gets better, it gets better, it gets better. And they say there is another one. It gets better. Hear this now, hear this. Two weeks after I had another set of CT scan and MRI, and I was told the cancer on my liver has shrunk. September 30th, 
going to receive a testimony like that. I want you to shout hallelujah to God right now.
seen this card or it's been given to you, you are going to write the three things you want God to do for you. The things you want to walk out of this place and testify about. If you feel this and you've given it to the ushers, you don't need to feel it again. But if you have not, this is the time to do it. Ushers, they have this form. If you've not gotten one, please raise up your hand. It will give one to you. See, it is important that you write down what you want God to do for you. This is a prayer request form. If possible, I will tell you, after you filled it, take a picture of it. So that when you send in your letter of testimony and your report of testimony, you will attach this to it and you'll be able to say, I asked the Lord and he did it. I sought the Lord and I found him. When I opened my mouth to pray to him, he answered from heaven. And everything I asked him, he did it. So I'm asking you today, take a step of faith and fill this form. You have the prayer request. Prayer request number one, write it down. The ushers will give you pens. We are going to collect it back from you. The pastor will pray over it and the Lord will meet you at the point of your need. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. The Lord will deliver you from everything that has plagued you in the name of Jesus. So please put down your prayer request. Put your name, your phone number, your email so that we can reach you. We can pray for you and pray with you. to you and say join Instagram 1 p.m. social time so if you would like to be receiving such messages make sure you fill this form and also if you want to accept Jesus there's a tick there just tick it and just tell us how we can partner with you if you would like to attend again the next time we're having this conference if you would like to recommend it to others please do the same and if you notice on this card there are some code that you can scan so that you can join our telegram group so that anytime there's an information you will be the first to receive it but most of all trust God and write down what you want many people that have come up here tonight have asked you to write down your prayer points what you want your letter of congratulations please do that now and the Lord will bless you are we expected tonight
plug-in facility came after marriage. Mm. Was, um, for as long as I know, my period has been horrible. Mm. Um, it will come for, as you, I mean, normally it should come once a month. Absolutely. And then for about a week. But mine will come whenever it feels like coming. Mm. Sometimes it won't come for four months at a stretch. And then when it comes, it will come for several days. Mm. Very heavy. Mm. Um, I tried everything. I went to several hospitals. Um, they said it was stress, you know, they kind of didn't so, tell me what the issue was. You told me about a time that you bled for two months, how long? Yes. Mm. So constantly, all through that period? Yeah. Mm. When it comes, mm. I would wear black throughout. Wow. So I was wearing black. Yeah, constantly wearing mm. black. Mm. Um, and it, it just made me, Pastor Mo said something, and funny, I've read that passage, but never read, never seen it that the woman was bent. Mm. I felt like I was bent in shame mm. for all those years. Mm. Um, like I said, I went to the hospital, but. Um, they said it was just stress. So there was no diagnosis? There was nothing. And that was my problem. Because I felt like if I had a name to the problem, I would put it under the name of Jesus. I will be able to pray a targeted prayer. Um, but nothing until after we got married. Until three years. So when did you get married? How long ago did you get married? I got married in 2015, seven years ago. Okay. Yeah. So um, when I was about to get married, I informed my husband um, that I was dealing with this health challenge and he said, you know, when you pray about it, everything will be fine. Man of God. <laughs> God. God. Um, and then after um, the marriage, um, he was, the period was horrible. Um, three years, imagine three years, three years dealing with And something. you didn't know what it was. That was the, for me it was bad because we didn't know what it was. It's just all oh, my period has come, you know. And then it never goes. Yeah, so eventually after um, praying um, about you know finding the solution, finding out what the problem was, um, we eventually led to a pastor who hinted that it might be PCOS mm. and to take certain tests. So he gave me direction. Okay. So for me, that was number one. I was happy that I had direction. Mm. This was three years into the marriage. Um, now, after that, um, we used several drugs, and in the midst of it all, I had fibroid, I had done surgeries for fibroid removal, to go to come back. Um, so it felt like I was being taunted. I'd taken out polyps as well. I, I knew the hospital very well. I knew, I knew what, was, what it was to go in and out of surgery. Um, so, yeah. Um, eventually got the diagnosis. Yeah, um, that of it was, PCOS. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and then, of course, um, I was told that it was incurable. Just manage it. Hmm. Just manage it with drugs. Okay. So, all of this was happening. You were bleeding constantly. You had been married for three years. You know, of course, you couldn't even start thinking about, you know, getting pregnant because all of these things were even happening, you know, with your health. So, how did this affect your life? Um, I'll say shame. Hmm. I'll say shame um, because I was dealing with pressure from myself. First of all, um, I was under. I was. I was. I thought I couldn't do what I was supposed to do as a woman. Um, get pregnant. Well, I felt was easy for for other people. So I was under that pressure, and I would pull away from everybody. At that time, all my friends had ch their children. They had first, first, second, you know, multiple children, and it was nothing for me. So I'll pull away, you know, and I feel like it was the devil trying to pull me away, you know, separate me from the pack, I would say, um, you know, to um, deal with me mentally. Um, you told me about a certain time, what happened with your, with your dad when he considered your situation? Oh, I'm a daddy's girl. <laughs> I'm a daddy's girl, and he's a stoic man. Um, but that day he called me, in the midst of everything, everything. He called me and he said, he started to cry. Wow. He started to cry that wow. um, his daughter going through this, he wishes he could take it from me. And for me, I, God, I felt so, I felt, I felt like I made my father cry, like my condition is that bad, that I was bringing shame to the family, um, pressure from friends as well. I remember, uh, uh, you know, just in public, people would just talk to me, oh, you're not pregnant yet, um, is it that you and your husband are just enjoying, 
the other day, a family friend told me, ah, have you done DNC? And I said, what was DNC? Genuinely. Yeah, and she said, um, have you gone for an abortion? Um, I just felt like, okay, you know, I'll bear it. <laughs> yeah. So, what happened? You know, how did your testimony come about? You've, you've been through all of these situations. You know, what happened? How did you move from that person, you know, to where you are today? Praise God. Um, in August of 2020, I felt the leading to... Okay, so at the beginning of the year, my friend told me... To, my best friend also got married at the same time as I was, as I did, and waited. She was waiting for a child as well. And she told me in January that she was pregnant. Um, she did IVF. But I just said, I wasn't doing it. Um, and then in August, after a while, I started to give in to the idea. Then in August, I felt like the Holy Spirit said, before you do anything, spend a word, spend a month with my word. Uh, pray, you know, look for scriptures targeted at the fruit of the womb. Targeted scriptures. Yes. Okay. Um, and then I did that. And towards the end, two things happened to me. Um, the first was that, um, because I knew it was PCOS, I knew the challenge was PCOS. So for me, the PCOS had weighed me down. It was this mountain in front of me. It was so you were focused on that? Absolutely. Mm. You know, I, I knew PCOS was um, incurable and all that. So um, then the Holy Spirit said, you need to redirect your focus Hallelujah. from the problem to God. Mm. Because it's almost like you think that God, you know, this problem is bigger than God. Mm. But you need to see what God can mm. do. So that was one. And then the second one was, um, it took me to a scripture, Psalm 128 verse 3, um, that says that your wife would be like a fruitful vine in a husband's house. Mm. Um, and your children like um, olive plants who surround the table. Mm, so you have that scripture, okay? And then the Holy Spirit opened my mind. It was like a and a session. I was having a conversation with the Holy Spirit. He said, do you know what a fruitful vine is? I was like, mm. And then he said, um, check online. And then I typed it and I um, searched images and he showed me images of grapes. Mm. You know how grapes are bunched together? Yes, yes. He told me that was the image of God's uh, you know, that was his expectation when it came to fruitfulness. That you'll be so, he's abundant that he will use Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. so, um, so that happened. And then a few months later, Pastor Polaji also um, gave, he gave a word and said, um, get three prayer points. Of course, you have several prayer points, but just get three prayer points at a time. Attach three scriptures to it. And continue to pray. So talking about focusing yes. on what you're praying about with scripture. Yes. Yeah. So he led me to even search for scriptures mm. because sometimes we are going through stuff and we don't know what God what God's word says about, about those things. So I got three words and you know just went focused on it. And then at the same time, I got my letter of congratulations. Hallelujah. It wasn't called letter of How congratulations. How many people have their letters of congratulations? Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, but yeah, I started to say everything like confessions that I thank God because I have my baby, I thank God because God has done it, almost like in past tense. And then I proceeded um, to do the IVF. Um, we started the treatments and everything was going well until suddenly um, the doctor looked at me and said, he doesn't think he's going to continue with it because um, my body wasn't responding as much. And he told me it was going to up my dosage, but it doesn't think it will really help. But just in case, um, we'll check again the following week. If it doesn't happen, we're going to stop. And instantly, I... So two things. The first thing was tears came to my eyes, like, again, like this thing was going to fail. But on the other hand, um, the Holy Spirit told me, Stay, stay firm with the world. Hallelujah. Like the devil is going to come for the world, of faith. but you have Hallelujah. to struggle. So I said, okay. I spoke to my friends, and then um, one of them told me that you know, say the thing you want the doctor to say at your next visit. And the other said, don't pray, praise. And then I went back to the hospital the following week. And and then what I said I wanted the doctor to say was that he would tell me congratulations that everything is fine. We got back to the hospital the following week and the doctor was looking at the screen and he felt the devil was telling me, I told you, it's not going to work. 
and um, the doctor told me, um, congratulations, that wow. you're going ahead. Wow. I was born. Wow. That went on, um, eventually I was pregnant, and then in December. You got pregnant when? I got pregnant in October okay. of last year, yes. Great. And then a few months later, I came to the UK. I was in Nigeria at the time. I came to the UK, and three days later, um, I started to bleed profusely. Yeah. It was red, it was, it was fresh, it was a lot, and I was scared. Immediately, I was rushed to the hospital. It was the thick of COVID, so I was the only one that could go in. Honestly, it was just me and my God. I was terrified. I was bleeding all over the chair in the waiting room because I remember I had to go and wipe down. And as they were wheeling me in, I asked, what's the problem? And she said, I'm so sorry, love. I'll never forget. I'm so sorry, love. You're having a miscarriage. Okay, so I feel like God was trying to protect my mind at that point because it feels like I lost my mind. I, 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 I couldn't think again. I couldn't think because it feels like God didn't want me to this the message the reports to get into my spirits and I reached out to my friends I need to I need to say this here it's important that we have a community of friends a community of people that can help when they you. say join the groups join the UK connect groups join the whatsapp groups join the telegram groups this is what it means hallelujah because Tell me what time, it means. I couldn't pray I was I couldn't pray and I reached out to them and sent them a message that this is what they said. And even their response alone gave me confidence. They said, okay, no problem, we'll pray about it. Um, later that night, I was supposed to be, I was supposed to go for a scan the following day just to check. But they had left me alone, like, I had miscarried. There was nothing they could do about me. Um, that night, the Holy Spirit said, you know what, it's time for you to open your mouth and pray. Yes, they are praying for you, but you are in this situation, you need to pray. And then I started to sing, I discovered the song, um, Olon Rabai, You Are Mighty. And I just started saying, God have mercy on me, God have mercy on me. I started to sing that song over and over and over again. And then something told me, don't you want to reach out to um, the pastors in Nigeria, Pastor Dai or Pastor Polaji, so that they can pray for you. And then I felt that was coming from a place of fear. Because if the Holy Spirit told me, if you feel like you can't pray and I'll answer you, then you don't know anything about me. Our God is good and kind to us. Amen. Um, and um, the following morning, I went in for the scan. I went to bed. The following morning, I went in for the scan. And um, I saw the doctor's reports. They had written a miscarriage wow. on it. Wow. I went in and... Um, they checked, they did a scan, and my baby was happy. She was playing, she was wow. bouncing. She was wow. yeah. Amazing God. When it was time for delivery, Pastor Foluke and everyone, when it was time for delivery, this one was, it was the worst of it all. Um, I was being induced, I was in labor, getting ready, and next thing, the fetal monitor of the baby, the monitor to, uh, the screen to monitor the baby's heartbeats, just all of a sudden crashed. I saw it crash from 90, 70, 40, 30, zero. No heartbeat for the baby. And immediately the nurse, I saw the panic on her face and she hit the emergency button. I was rushed to the theater and we called my husband to come in and we were just singing the song, our song, Olon Rabai, Your Mighty, and we we're just praising. And we had our baby. We had our baby to the glory of God. Like this, this evening. Number one, 
the thing we say is very important. Our God is good and kind to us. Because when you're going through stuff, you think that God, you feel like God is not listening. God is wicked. He can't do it, but he doesn't want to do it. But that's not the reality. The reality is, he sees everything and he knows the best time to give you. So you're not being delayed in the whole sense. And also, that when you have done all else, you have prayed, you have read the scripture, you stand.
tonight is about celebrating the goodness of God. It's about celebrating the kindness of God. It's about celebrating the victory we have in Christ Jesus. We're giving the praise of God. We're giving the praise of God. There's no one like our 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 God. Glorious and holiness, fearfully praises, always doing oneness. We give you praise, oh God. We worship your holy name. We worship your holy name. You are the one that stood up the four gates and said, Lift up your hands, oh ye gates. And the lift of the everlasting God. He said, Let the King of glory come in. He said, We're the King of glory. He the Lord strong and mighty. Oh, the Lord mighty in battle. He is the King of glory. Thank you for a turning point today. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Can we just shout a huge hallelujah? Some particular time, 
I said, so she joined and she was she from the hospital. And I said, can you hear me? And she couldn't respond. So her sister responded and said, she can hear, but she cannot talk. So she can only, I said, if you can hear me, just move a finger. So she will move one finger. I said, so I began to talk to her and just pray for her. And um, just imagine how she looked then. Then, you know, I, I remember what she said in the testimony. And the thing is that she, the sister told me, she said, they've sent out the word, the palliative word. That's what they've sent it. This one, okay. So maybe I've not turned on this one. Is it on? Is it on? It's on now. Yeah. I should not turn it off. Oh, I did already. Okay. So we prayed for her. And she was in the palliative ward, and um, when you're given days to leave. It's another kind of thinking. Especially in the hospitals in Africa, you will say, let's go abroad. But when the hospital is in the UK, then you know that except you get a miracle, the end has come. When she began to recover because the doctors didn't think she recovered. They were shocked and said, what happened? Then she sent me a message through uh, the person she met me through and sent a message. But what I did not see was the last picture that she sent. I, I did see that. I'm just seeing that today for the first time. I'm, I'm just seeing that for the first time. Will you put up that picture? Put up the... here, a digital bank here, 
in the UK. And if you are familiar with Nigeria, he was the head of eTransact in Nigeria. And you know, yeah, so that's my time. And of course, Boyga Balogo, which had CSL, CSL right here, you know, CSL and uh, CSL Pay in the UK. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Among several other people, I'm sure that uh, then Pastor Jola, of course, is also here. Pastor Jola also, of course, is also here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In case I've missed somebody, you know, just, just allow me. Just think about it that I'm overwhelmed, you know. Yeah, I'm overwhelmed because this is our first ever service in the UK. any kind of sitting space. People are standing all over the corner. They're asking the workers to stand up. And someone says, how do you do this? God is good. God is good. And by the way, I don't know when they're going to give you, we got for all of you a car air freshener that has God is good and kind to you. Can I have one of those? Can I get one of those air fresheners? Yes, it's just going to get it. It's not for sale. Just for free, just for sale, just for free. But we're going to give you at the end of the service, so just be patient. Just a reminder that God is good and God is kind to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, can we get into, can we get into this today? To so just to warn you, during the service, someone can just ask screaming that their deaf ear opened, that they can walk, that they just got an email, just to warn you, just to warn you, just to warn you, just to warn you, just to warn you. Just to warn you. So when some things happen, don't think it's um, abnormal. Just like, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And this is what I tell people. When someone close to you gets a miracle, when you don't know God is good and kind, you say, God, when is my turn? That is casting mentality that comes from a region. Because it's almost when you, especially when you have some African background or top formation background, because you struggle to go for to school, all those things. When something happens, it's quick to say, it's going to finish. But with God, it never finishes. Praise the Lord. When God does something for one, know that it's around you. This is what I always tell people. When Jesus broke the five loaves and two fishes and fed the disciples, did they get the five loaves and two fishes at the same time? Yes or no? No. Some got before the other. But guess what? As soon as others got, it was proof it will soon be my turn. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And I will open my bread and knife. If you're familiar with the way I teach, you know I use objects to teach. So, yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 in verse 10. Glory. That's someone that came from back home. Thank you. This one. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Verse 10. So the Bible says this, If the iron be blunt, and it doeth not wedge, wedge means sharpen the edge, then he must put more strength but wisdom is profitable to what? The rest. So let me show you an example. I have this knife, I have this bread ice here, and I'm trying to use this. The challenge is that I'm not using the sharp side. I'm just as if this is a blunt knife. And I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do this. And if it's not working, what do I do? I put more effort and try to do this and try to do this. I don't care for more effort and try to do this. Most people think prayer doesn't work. But the challenge is not that prayer doesn't work. They just don't know how to use prayer. So when they use prayer, they are forcing it. Listen, if your prayer is not working, God says you have to sharpen the blade. When prayer doesn't work for Christians, you know what we do? We increase the intensity. So we say, let's add 21 days fasting to it. But well, that's not what you should do first. So this is someone is struggling with a marital delay and is, is, you know, and eventually you know what you do? You take the knife and throw it away and say, God did not provide the business funding for me. But the question is this, do you know how the knife works? So this evening, it's about how do you really pray in such a way that changes everything? How do you pray in such a way that gives you a testimony? How does that really happen? So the Bible 
Bible says that when the knife is not working, the first thing you have to do is what? To sharpen it. And it gives us an instruction. It says, wisdom is profitable to direct. So you see, a lot of people have frustration in prayer, not because prayer is not working, but because they've not mastered the act of praying effectively. So the problem is not the knife. The problem is that the knife is sharpening. And so there are two categories of people here. There are people that are still on it and putting more energy and they're gradually getting tired and frustrated. And there are people that are not just getting tired and frustrated, they are past that stage. They've thrown away prayer and say, it doesn't work. If it works, I should be married by now. If it works, I should have gotten my paper by now. If it works, I should have been healed by now. If it works, I should have been. And they come for the principle. But what they must slow down to ask themselves is this. Can I sharpen the blade? And you know what I'm saying so tonight because in this kind of meeting, you're going to find people that have been praying about something for 10 years. You're going to find people that have been praying about something for 15 years. You're going to find people that have been praying something for three months. You're going to find people that need a desperate miracle. And before you throw in the tower and say it doesn't work, give it a chance. Okay? That's what I'm saying. Give it a chance again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, um, um, sometime last year, um, I asked this person if I could share his testimony. He's a popular Nigerian musician. His name is Yaya. And I wanted to give that testimony because it's a testimony you can verify. And um, he came to see me. And he had been praying about this thing for three to five years. And when he had been praying about it for three to five years, he had not changed. He had gotten frustrated. He was exhausted. Then he finally said, you know what, chatted me online and said, can I come and see you? I said, well, I have some time, let's see. So he saw and he spoke to me and I said, okay, that's fine. I said, I gave him, what about this person could help? He said, nobody wants to help, I've tried everything. And I said, okay, that's fine, let's pray. So I got my hands together and prayed with him in Jesus' name. Then in two days, he called me. He said, excuse me, what did you use to pray for me? <laughs> I said, why? He said, is this how God answers your prayers? I said, why? Then he sent me a letter that was the answer to prayer. He said, I've been waiting for five years. He said, but is it not the same prayer I prayed? I said, the same knife, but some of us knives are sharper than the other. Because what I want to do as a pastor is this. It's not to make you be looking for me after now. It's that when you're by yourself, People can come to you because now you know what to do, how to pray, how to speak the word of God. When the company needs the next five million pounds, you know what to do to bring it in. When you need to help your sister get married, you know what to do. When the doctor said your fallopian tube is blocked, you know what to do. Just yesterday, I got a part, just about three days ago, she was meant to be here because she's in London, and but she's not here because today's a child's name in. And just for you to know, the lady that testified, they, were, they wanted the child for six years, I believe. Six years. And this lady, they've been, I think it's their eight year marriage, and she's a Muslim. And her sister, she sent the testimony, and then, you know, her sister, maybe I could just say the name because I'm sure they were watching. So if you know Nigeria very well, I would not say the name of the person, I would say the name of a sister. A sister, yeah. So you would, because I'm like that, that's my parents. So there's a very beautiful cake company in Lagos, popular. It's called Soft Lagos. Yeah. So, and Salt Lagos have gotten this sister of hers and they've been struggling to have a child for about eight years. And she joined during the prayer. And what happened eventually is that she got pregnant a few months after and she had a baby last week, something exactly, and today's a naming. And, you know, because I asked her that, I was like, if God has done this for you, will you come and testify today? He said, Pastor, I would love to, but today's the name of the baby. But the question is this, God is good and kind. So, Let's look at the Bible. So why don't people receive from God? That's the first thing. So why do people pray a lot? And because you come tonight, why do people pray a lot and not receive from the Lord? Let, let me read a scripture to you quickly. Luke chapter 8 verse 43. Luke chapter 8 verse 43. And I'm going to just jump because it's a story you will know. I just want to help us to pray. Luke chapter 8 verse 43. The Bible says this, and the woman having an issue of blood 12 years had spent all her leaving. She was sick and had become broke because of the sickness and could not be healed. Came behind and touched the bar of his garment. And immediately 
the Bible says, the issue of blood starched. And Jesus said, who touched me? So the first thing is this, why couldn't receive from the Lord? People complain about their problems but never ask specific things. Oh yeah. So you see someone praying. I want to give an example. Lord, I'm 40 years old. Is that who died? I don't have a husband. Is that who died? Listen, is that what you want? He said, ask, you shall receive. He didn't say complain and you shall get. So someone says, Father, look at me. Look at me. Every day I'll be using the train. I'll be using the job. You'll just be abusing me. When will you glorify yourself in my life? Is that what you want? He said, ask and you shall receive. Because what are you asking for? You know what James says? James says, you ask not and you receive not. So the reason why you receive not is because you're asking not. The question of tonight is that, what are you asking for? Oh wow. You don't have to complain about the fact that your company need more funds. You don't have to complain about the fact that you need immigration documents. But what exactly are you asking for? And you know some, some people, instead of asking, they keep complaining. Then the other people that ask, they ask in a very vague way. Can, can I get a bottle of water and a glass? You, you can help me. They ask in a very vague, vague way. They say, they say things that are very vague. So they say, they say, God, I need financial blessing. And this is water. This is water. God says I need financial blessing. This whole water is one million pounds. God says, God, just bless me in Jesus' name. And so God just just name. So God says, okay, that's what happened. So you get an extra five hundred pounds. Did God answer your prayer? Yes. What was the problem? You were not specific. Most people are asking God for things but not specific. I want to ask you something. When you're not specific, would they, what would the angel act upon? Nothing. So it's to their discretion. You know why people are not specific? A lot of people are not specific when it comes to prayer because of the fear of disappointment. And the, the, the reason why is that that prayer is really based on fear. Why don't you get specific? You know, you say, God, I, I want this huge contract. I want this huge contract. I, I, want this, I want to have a contract. I want to grow financially and get an extra 1,000 pounds. But it's something to be grateful. You feel down. But what did you ask for? You got it. You say, God bless me. God was faithful. I ran into a woman some time ago, and this woman had had about four miscarriages. And I said, what are you praying for? He said, I'm praying to God to get pregnant. I said, no wonder you, no wonder you always have miscarriages. I said, because you are always praying to get pregnant. I said, pray to have a baby. I said, pray to have a baby. And that season, she prayed to have a baby. Now she has a baby. Are you hearing me, people? See, there's something about being very specific when it comes to God. Because, listen, I, the angels, your silence of not being specific will confuse the angels. Fine, Mom. So tonight, what do you want? A good job. <laughs> Wonderful. And you have received it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah, in Jesus' name. So the question is this, what do you want to have a good job? There are good jobs in KFC. Career. You'll be surprised. You didn't tell a good job. Some of you got the first KFC job and you said, Praise the Lord. That's a good job. Why not tell him exactly what you want? The reason why we don't do that is a fear that God is going to fail. And once prayer is built on fear, it's going to collapse. What do you want? Father, I want two million pounds to buy out my house cash. think about God? <laughs> Do you know who our God is? <laughs> God says, I'm the person that will use the raven to feed you. You know what a raven is? A raven is a stingy bed. It doesn't feed his own child. God says, I will not use familiar sources to bless you. I will use sources says it. He said, God, he uses a basket to fetch water so that a bucket can be disgraced. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. 
So why do people receive, number one, people, people, <laughs> people complain. It, it's like a check. It's like a check. When you go to the bank, when you go to the bank and present a check, you know, and they say, what do you want? You're like, mm, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. They're not going to pay you. If you want money from the bank, you have to write a specific thing on the check. Isn't it amazing that in Genesis chapter 1, all that God saw was darkness, and God said, let there be light. Because God was not complaining about the darkness, he was rather saying what he wanted. You keep saying, in this UK, nothing works, is that what you want? Be like your father. Even though you feel and see things, say what you want. Say what you want. You will take the letter from the doctor that says you have a fallopian to put it by the side of your bed. So what will happen to you? Your tube will be blocked. Because all of a sudden you find a new Bible you meditate upon day and night, which is not what report. But the Bible says, which report will you believe? He said, we shall believe the report of the Lord. You shall believe what? The report of the Lord. There's nothing he cannot do. The second reason why people receive is this. The second reason why people receive is because of wrong beliefs. Oh, wow. Negative beliefs are insulators. And this is, this is the reason why a lot of prayer for Christians never see results. And that's why you see someone that is never prayerful, but see a lot more results. Because they are not so prayerful, but they're very positive. Let me tell you the truth. Most of the people that pray a lot that I know are very negative. Just talk to them outside the prayer, and you wonder, well, I thought you prayed about this. Negative things. And this is what it is. Negative beliefs are insulators. Positive beliefs are conductors. So, what was negative belief? The first negative belief is this God doesn't love me. See, as simple as that is, a lot of people don't believe that God loves them. They say, If God loves me, why is my life like this? I want to ask you a question. When you were young, did you have a strict mother? Yes or no? Yes. Or a strict dad? Did you at some point think that they were not your parents? You thought so? That you were adopted? Or you thought so? When you grew older, did your perspective change? Why? Listen, if you judge your current situation, if you use it to judge the love of your parents, you'll be confused. But when you grow up, you understand what they were trying to do before. Listen to me. If you judge God's love based on physical circumstances, it will confuse you. Because you're like, how come I don't have this? How come I don't do that? How come I don't do this? How come I... But don't do that. Look at your prayer. It was when you grew old that you're like, oh, my mom was actually a very good woman. I was just too young to understand. The reason I'm saying so is this. A lot of people cannot... See, when they pray to God, they think God is their problem. They say, God, why are you looking at me like this? God is not the one looking at you like that. They say, God, why are you doing this to me? It's not God that is doing that to you. Read the Bible. I'm going to show you the Bible. See, when you think God is not on your side, how do you think I get answers to prayers? When you think God is not on your side, you have cancer. You say, God, why, did, why are you giving me cancer? Listen to me. Read the whole Bible. What did God give cancer? No. There was someone in the Bible, he was born blind. What did Jesus Christ say? They said, who sick? Jesus Christ said, this blindness from birth is not the work of God, but opening his eyes is the work of God, that the work of God may be perfected. You need to have a deep assurance that God loves me. What do I mean? He loves me too much to leave me stranded. He loves me too much to make sure my complaint doesn't fall apart. God is good and kind to me. He loves me personally. It's not every generally. He loves me personally. He has a personal interest in me. I want to ask you a question. Everyone look up here. Some of you came in from Liverpool. You flew in from, you know, some distant place. Who came from the father's place today? Where, where's that? What is it? Lima. 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 What? Dublin. Some came from Dublin here today. Some came from Petersburg. Middlesbrough. Glasgow. Hold on. 
Hold on, hold on, relax. Relax. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. You mean that God saw you coming all the way? You paid the fares, and He will let you go empty-handed. Virgin, what about the other sins you commit? 
Because once you break one law, you break all the laws. If you're smart, what do you say? Lord, I'm nothing. Based on Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, I come based on the offering of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. I come based on the offering of Jesus Christ. Because the more you say, I've done this, Satan says, you have not done this. He said, what, what have I not done? What have I not done to get my vacation paper approved? He said, what have I not done? I've served you. I've danced. No! Answer prayer is what is a gift. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus said, Eli, Eli, meaning, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? You know why? God forsook him on the cross so that he can always say yes to you. He forsook him on the cross so that he can always what say. So when just because of the cross, God says, nah, 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 why? So that one day when you're praying, he can say, yes, 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 yes. Glory to God. Some people say, these are wrong beliefs. God is punishing me. You know why God is punishing me? Because I knew I knew what I did. I knew who I am. This is, this is next level prayer testimony. And I hope that you're able to attend the next level every day. Because it's life changing. Two things I recommend. Attend the next level prayer every day. Join the, listen to the sermons. It will change your mind. Change your life. So this lady was watching from the US. And she'd been trying to have a child. So as I was praying the next level, I said, there's, a, there's someone trying to watch and There's someone watching and you're trying to have a child. You can't get pregnant. But the Spirit of God says that, the reason why you can't get pregnant is because you did an abortion and you think that God is punishing you. And I said this, I said, you are either forgiven or you're punished. You can have both. Think about it. If someone forgave you, then they did not punish you. Then if they punished you, they did not want to forgive you. If God says my sins are forgiven, that means my sins are not punished. I said to the lady, I said, lady, God does not punish forgiven sins. If the sins are forgiven, they can't be punished. If they are punished, they were not forgiven. And the lady, that day, chatted me. He said, as you said so, I felt a burden lifted off my head. Three months after she got pregnant. Watch this now. I shared the testimony on the next level, maybe some months later. Just for going to somebody else. And she said, sorry, Pastor, you need to update my testimony. I'm not only pregnant now, I have my baby. He said, I've been trying to have this baby for so long. I did not know the wrong mentality was giving Satan a foothold in my life. That's what wrong, wrong mentality gives Satan was a foothold in your life. You know what it tells you? It says, how can you get married when you've done all of this? How can God bless you when you made all these business mistakes? He said, but I've asked for forgiveness. And he says, and Satan comes and reminds you because Satan is a referee. But what did God say? He said, in the new covenant, he says, your sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Hold on, everybody. Look up here. Let me tell you something. Have you noticed in the New Testament, when the Bible speaks about Abraham, Elijah, Elisha, all those people, God never talks about their sins. He almost speaks about them as though they are perfect. Yes or no? When you hear Abraham was strong in faith, where was Abraham strong in faith? Abraham that took Hagar's, Hagar, eh, sorry, Hagar and slept with her and had another child. But the thing with the New Testament is this. New Testament doesn't look at the errors and the sins because they have been washed under the blood of Jesus Christ. What it looks at is what Christ has done. He says, oh, glory to God. He says, this New Testament, your sins and iniquity, I will remember. No more. You know what that does to us? We have a sense of righteousness. He doesn't produce recklessness in us. He produces what? Righteousness. So when people, people that sin consciously, they are praying, God, I know I'm a bad person. And I'm a useless person. If you don't answer me, I know I don't deserve an answer. How will God answer that kind of prayer? So the devil says, it's your portion. You'll be surprised. This is the reason.
reason why you come to a Christian meeting is the new Christians that get miracles. The old Christians, they are so sin conscious because the church has made them so conscious that when they are there, they'll be thinking, this can happen, I'm too dirty. The new Christian doesn't know too much. He just says, I'm a new Christian. I've just come. Let me receive. And that's it. But the old Christians, they say, no, 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 you can't. How can you receive that? Man? Remember this. Remember. Didn't you notice when Jesus Christ asked them, whosoever has not seen, let him stone. <laughs> Who let first? The older Pharisee. Because the more they stay in religion, the more they were more aware of their sins. Glory be to God. So let's 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 read the final scripture and close. And I'm, ex I'm excited today because just in the moment you start seeing miracles happen. You start seeing miracles are happening. You start seeing testimonies of like, oh, did that happen? Did that happen? Then I'm excited because some of you are going to go to the hospital. Some of you, the miracle is going to come in your email as soon as what is going to stop. to God. One of the biggest testimony I had, I think it's from London, a 53 year old lady sent me testimony. He said, I'm 53 years old, I've never been married, I got engaged this year. God does things, even me, I'm like, what? 53 years old, I was thinking, what did they meet? How did they find out? And the reason I'm saying so, some of you need to start a company. Some of you have a young company. And you're wondering, what's going to happen? That's what we're going to pray. Amen. Oh, I have some powerful prayer points for you. Yeah. You are going up with something significant today. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. I say you're going up with something significant today. Yeah. I'm telling you, you're going up with something significant today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, shout I receive it. Mark chapter 11 verse 24. So how do we receive from the Lord? See what the Bible says. This just, it says this. Therefore I say unto you. See what it says? Whatsoever thing you desire. Did you see that? He said, not the things you hate. What do you want? Desire. What happens today? I prayed about it. This was what I desired. I said, Lord, as we come, let there be no space in the hall. That was my desire. It, when we started this meeting, the first person I spoke to said, Pastor, let's plan for 200 people. I said, nah, that's not what I see in my spirit. See people sitting down on the staircase, see them, see them standing all over the place. People are in the extensions. How? But to heal that is able to do. Far above what we can ask you. There's no scarcity with God. You're the one that knows cancer. Cancer is like heading to God. I want to ask you, just imagine if you lose a thousand pounds, you'll be worried, yes or no? But if you lose one pound, will you be worried? No. But if you get loses a thousand pounds and one pound, which one will you be worried about? No, because of his size. It's, you, it's your size that makes you think that one thing is big and the other is small. But when you come to the altar, problems. You know how cold it gets in Canada, just like here. During winter, the child puts off the shirt and starts sweating because a system had gone upside down. It would injure the mom. One day as I was praying, the power of God came on the child. He said, Pastor, since that day, my child has been okay. Can I say something to you? Please listen to me, people. There are people that have autistic children, cerebral palsy children, there's nothing too hard for God. And someone says, I'll tell you why the miracles are scarce. 
The miracle has cursed because most of the time, the pain of the parents does not allow their faith to rise. It's, they are so pained that to even exercise their faith is difficult. How do you receive? See what the Bible says. It says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. Have, have you written on the card what you desire? Is, is it blurry? Or is it specific? Specific, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just put it there. It's 20 million pounds. It's fine. It's God. I'm not afraid of figures. Figures don't scare me. They used to scare me. You know, maybe because you met us when we were here, but there was a time when a tiny box breaker was saying, we were just a tiny church. When our church started, you wouldn't believe this. We had to stop church for three months. We couldn't pay rent. The rent was less. The, the rent was literally maybe five pounds. But we couldn't afford it. We stopped the whole service. But I told myself, I walk by faith, not by sight. Those days, you know, you, you, because you will think that all this pastor just excites us. But the reason I talk this way is because I've been there. This is because I used to put on my head. This guy over here, while he stand up, Pastor Wally stand up. This guy is a pastor in London now with his wife. We used to use this tiny guy he had because he was the only one that had the car that time. You know, pull the speakers, they, they pull the speakers on our head and carry it. But when we carried those speakers, that was not where I was. I could see by faith. I could see by faith. Because the just, the just, the just shall lead by faith. We walk, we walk by faith, not by sight. Hey, can you see by faith? Hallelujah. Can, can you see by faith? Hallelujah. Can you see your job by faith? Can you see your miracle by faith? Can you see your healing by faith? Can you see your marriage by faith? Can you see your engagement ring by faith? Can you see your approval by faith? Can you see your baby? Your man? Can you see your baby by faith? Can you see your partnership by faith? This is what it says. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, then it gives us a big faith. It's a belief. You what? Believe that what? What is believing? Change the way you think. Believing is in the mental realm. Believe, you receive it. What does that mean? In God's kingdom, receiving is believing. Believing is what? Receiving. Question. How do you receive in the kingdom of God? I believe it. What's believing? By saying that it is now so to me. So when we pray, say, thank you, Jesus. Although I don't see it physically, but it's now so to me. There's no need to, I want to ask you a question. Where's our moderator? Please come. Please come. Yeah, come. Give me a microphone. Microphone, is it working? No, don't worry. You can, you, you can have your seat. I can use him. Just put a picture of him. Yes, sir. How are you? This is our music director. How are you? Do you believe you're a man or you're a man? I know I'm a man. Oh, you know you're a man. The reason why I'm saying so, you don't believe what you what exists. You believe something that's not there. So the reason why God says you believe is because naturally it's not there. But it says the way you receive is by what? Believing. So where's the checkbook? Where, where, where's the check? Where, where's the checkbook? So if you give me a check, is the check money? A check is no money because it can bounce. But if you give me a check, if, if you give me this check right now, if you say, oh, pastor, I just give you 100,000 pounds, I'm like, oh, wow, praise God. I must save the money. Well, the only reason why I, I, I rejoice is because I believe that what I have is equivalent to money. What's what I have in document? The question is this. If you don't see it, can you believe it? You know why? It's believing that is equal to what we see it. How do I, this is the problem with people that pray. A lot of people pray, but they don't receive. Why do they don't receive? Because they are not able to what? Believe. So as soon as you stop praying, how far, how far is your marriage now? How I go marry, I go marry myself. But she just prayed about her marriage. Did you see that? So what does she receive? What what is this? Let, let's read now, let's read now. He says, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have what? What do you have? You have what you believe. Not even what you prayed for. 
Did you notice that? You have what you believe. So when you say, I'm sorry, that, then that's what you have. When well, we finish praying, if you are healed, check if you are healed. You know why I don't check? Because I am not healed. So why do I check? I know. One lady said, when we finished the prayer, I went back to the hospital. Why did I go back to the hospital? Because she believed that something had happened to her. So how do you receive from God? The first step is this, by hearing. Because hearing brings faith. The danger is that you hear too many things that destroy your faith. You need to start hearing things that what? Build your faith. Like this. I want to really encourage you today. Go to Harvesters TV on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Go there once in a week and just hear something because this world is full of terrible news. Inflation is this way. Um, what are they going? I heard that there are new council taxes and this also is happening. There are many things. The rate of divorce is now 60%. Um, what do they call it? The rate of cancer is now 40%. People die from COVID, 80%. Look at all of those. How will happen? It will drown your faith. What are you here? You need to hear testimonies. You need to hear testimonies. And that's why in our church, in the next level, we always tell people, when you have a testimony, don't keep it. Share with us. Share with us. Because testimony is prophetic. So the first thing is hearing. The second thing is this, believing. Because believing is what? Receive. So when I pray for you right now, will you receive? Yes, sir. How will you receive? Believe. Okay. And, and by, that, by, by the time you believe, someone will say that you are stupid. You say, Satan, I know you. You want me to lose what I've received. I'm going to hold it. it. By tomorrow night, I will say, should we have next the pastor now? Have you, what I say, Satan, I know you. I'm going to hold on to it. Let me tell you something. When our church started and we couldn't pay for the venue and the venue was five pounds, how do you think I felt? I felt like, Satan said, you are an idiot. He said, if you cannot pray for five pounds, this people won't really pray for them. But look at us today. Because faith always waits. Faith always waits. I'm telling you, you know, there was a time people together this in, in, in my home country was a challenge. But look at us, the, probably over 2,000 people in this auditorium today. You know, I, I told some people were coming to have a meeting in London. They said, oh, there's COVID, people don't come, all the just are empty. I said, we walk by faith and not by sight. This is really a miracle. You know what's going to happen in the next few months? A lot of single ladies who started the pictures.
So how do you receive? By what? Believe. By what? Believe. Believing. What is believing? Telling yourself it is done. Because believing is a mindset. Believing is what? A mindset. Just remember, once you're negative, anything type negative is negative. Your prayer type negative is negative. Your service type negative is negative. Because it's negative. So you keep saying, who will who, who marry someone like me? That's why you're single. You keep saying, UK is so tough. That's why it's tough for you. But no matter the prayer, because whatever you say times negative is what? Negative. Say, UK works for me. It works for me. It works for me. Glory to God. Just two more things and we close. So, the believing. So, you need to choose and say, when do you believe? It says, when things change. No, it says, when you pray, believe. At the moment we pray. So, if you have the Lord, I said, I command the Lord to come out. Check your body. Don't say, don't be looking for the Lord. Be looking for the healing. Someone said, yeah. the Lord is the Lord. No, he should be looking at, the Lord should not be here again. You know, sometimes we tell people, if you could not walk to what you cannot do before, brother. Are you ready? 
Amen. Question. Do you know that you're going home with a miracle?
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. Isaiah 41, verse 14. I want to pray for all the business people. I want to pray on businesses, finance, and career right now. Isaiah 41. If you have those cards, pass the ushers. Just pass the ushers. My ushers, bring the cards forward for me. Glory to God. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 14. Do you have it on the screen? Glory to God. Can you let me take this away? Thank you. See what the Bible says. <laughs> then can we read together? Can we read together? Yes, sir. Once ago, it said, Fed not thou of Jacob, and yet men of Israel. I will help thee, say the Lord, and I will be mine, the Holy One of Israel. Are you ready? It says, it says, here you may seem small, you may seem insignificant. He said, God says, I will help you.
battle of frustration, <laughs> of delays, <laughs> and disappointment. Disappointment stops right now. I'm going to 
ask you to do what you could not do before. I'm going to ask you to do what you could not do before. I'm going to ask you to do what you could not do before. And what I ask you, if it was your leg, if it was your eyes, whatever it is, just begin to exercise it. Glory to God. I say glory to God. There's a lady, you have a lump in your breast. It's gone in Jesus' name. Right now, listen to this. Leg problems have been healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Back, back and spine problems have been healed in Jesus' name. I rebuke, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just this is what I want to just put your hands and we're going to sing together. And the power of the Lord would come. And let me say something to you. Don't be that kind of person if they don't mention your case, you feel you are not healed. Because if we have to mention every case tonight, we will be here till tomorrow. So you need to just believe and receive. Hallelujah. Just believe and what? Receive. Once we pray, believe and what? Receive. Hallelujah. I see someone you have a cancer diagnosis. I'm going to come to that in a, in a, in a little bit. Yes, hallelujah. Yep, yeah. hallelujah.
there's someone you have a certain back problem, it's been there for such a long time. So bed is a big problem for you. Right now the Lord is healing you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Everybody just go ahead and receive from the Lord. Because right now the Lord is touching you. Go ahead and receive from the Lord. Declare that you have received healing with your mouth. Declare that you have received healing with your mouth. Declare you receive healing with your mouth. Blood pressure is being healed right now by the power of the Lord. Just quickly, if while I was praying, 
you checked your body, you checked if the Lord was there, you checked something. I wanted to come to my right hand side and just come and tell me what the Lord has done. Just come and tell the pastors on the right hand side. Just step out on the right hand side. And we're just going to sing it again. Hallelujah.
say the final prayers, pray for the business people. You know, pray for the business people. Do I have a microphone? Must be looking at the microphone right there. Will you will you come here? You, you wanted to write, okay? Praise God. Oh, wow. Scoliosis is a disease of the spine, so she's unable to bend. She found out 12 years ago that she has that, and she's been managing it over the years. She's unable to bend. She says, today, as you prayed, and you mentioned that okay, she's now able to bend over. She's been crying. What? She's been crying over there. Can I use this microphone? Yes.
she presses, the discharge comes out. Wow. But as she prayed, oh God, and you asked her to do what she couldn't do before, she began to press. Yes. When I volunteered, you know, I, I, I registered with the 
ushering units. I told myself, I said, God, I don't think I will be able to be an usher because I can't stand for too long. I can't stress the leg because that was what my GP told me that don't. So I decided to join the intercessory unit and I've, I've been committed. I've been praying right there while seated up there. You told us to start doing what we couldn't do. Then I tried climbing the stairs on my own without leaning on this leg. Then as I was doing it, going up and coming down, I was able to do it without any help climbing the stairs. So normally when you want to climb the stairs, you will need support. Yeah, I need support. You need support. I need support. And then what's I always have um, no bleeding for the past seven years. You said we should touch and check ourselves. I did this. And there's no mistake. Peter never knew there was money in the mouth of a fish. It was Jesus that gave him instruction that there's money in the mouth of a fish. This is my prayer for you. That in the name of Jesus Christ, that the Spirit of God will give you clarity and lead you to opportunities that are profitable. You will have deals, you will have contracts that will wipe out your debts. What others need long term loan for, you will pay cash. Because God will expand your capacity, because God will give you direction, God will expand your financial capacity, God will give you wisdom and boldness in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray for everyone that is here that's trying to have a child. Lord, you did it for the lady we had a testimony. You will do it just now again. In the name of Jesus, whatever has been responsible for you not to get pregnant, this time I cancel in Jesus' name. This 2022, you'll get pregnant, and 2023 will carry your baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever is responsible for the marital delay and crisis, Jesus Christ said, Peace be still. Every marriage that is going through is tough, peace be still. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Everything that's made marriage difficult for you is over. My brother, my sister, enter into your marital testimony.
Thank you, Father. Praise God. Everyone that has a sickness in your body, now, I said, put your hand on the floor, put your hands on the sickness of this. Anyway, if it's somewhere private, just put it on your chest still. That's fine. Thank you, Jesus. Are there people that you have a diagnosis of cancer? Would you raise up your hands and say, I'm just trying to see, you know, diagnosis of cancer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking for how many because if you start praying for them, we're going to keep everybody waiting. So we go pray for them after the service. Yeah, I can see one person here. It's a lot of people. There's just a few persons, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to look through the crowd. It's a lot of people. Okay. There's just about two persons. Okay. So after the service, you will just come. You know, just pray for you personally. Just pray for you personally. Anyone here that's trying to get pregnant, that's why you're here. You're trying to get pregnant is not worked. You just wave your hands at the same. You're trying to get pregnant. All right. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Now, there are people that are here on behalf of someone else. This is what I was saying before, you know, I want to get a piece of handkerchief so we can pray on and you can send back to them. It's not magical, we're not selling it. It's free, it's your handkerchief, it's your thing. We just want to pray on those materials and you can send it back to them. Thank you, Jesus. All right, can we believe go for a miracle right now? All right. Just remember this, everyone look at me. God is good and God is kind. Just remember. Maybe it's a document issue you have. There's someone I saved the spirit. Some years ago, the person you're married with just took off and you bought head from the person. And that thing has moved your life in a very terrible direction. Where are you? You don't have to come out and read something private. Just raise up your hands. You know, it's a lot of people. Where are you? The person that you married just took off. Okay, I see you. Just took off. And it's just messed up everything. Um, all of you, this is the word we belong to you. And the Spirit of God is saying, at this time, He said, the total chaos that came because of that, all there is coming into it. Yeah. Because I'm bringing you restoration. Yeah. Restoration, says the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Yeah. The, there's, there's someone here, what I see is, I'm not sure if it's your father or your father figure began to have sex with you when you were very young. And now you're of a marriageable age, but you can't deal because of how messed up your mind is about marriage and sex and all of those kind of things. And the Spirit of God says to you that for a long time you've been keeping that wound. He said, but it's time to open it up and let me heal you. And the Spirit of God is healing you right now. Yeah. He's healing you right now. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's someone, I don't know if it's you or you're standing in the camp for someone, but you have a wound that's refused to heal. And the Spirit of God is fixing it right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. There's someone within the last three years who just began to have these seizures from nowhere. And right now, the sea just stops now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Someone is suffering with one of your ears that is deaf. That's going, you're losing hearing one of your ears. Right now, you did notice, but hearing is being restored in that ear in Jesus' name. Yeah. Everyone that has a walking problem, the Lord is healing that. You've seen some rooms and you have a walking problem. I want you to begin to move up and down. You have a walking problem. Either it's arthritis, you came with a wheelchair, you came with a walking stick, and begin to move up and down. The Lord is healing that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And right now, anywhere you're placing your hands for your healing, either it's a fiber. It's a tumor, whatever it is, 
whatever the diagnosis is. The Bible says he has given us a name above every other name. He said, at the name of Jesus, every day shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every day shall bow. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command every sickness, come on your body now.
Yeah, just leave it. That's very easy for people. So, so just follow. So you can send your testimony tonight, tomorrow. Some of you don't want to come out. You can send the testimony tonight, tomorrow, and all of those things. And um, uh, just one announcement. If um, yeah, you can follow. If you want to be part of, we have an NLP commun community. It's a Telegram group. There's a WhatsApp group you can wish to interact. There's a Telegram group. They will also put the link on it. You can join the Telegram group and you'll be aware. It's nice to see you again. You know, when did you leave Lagos? It's nice to see you. So, you know, it's it will be good to just, if you want to follow the Telegram group, hallelujah. And the last thing is this. If you have this church, is going to start in London, praise the Lord. Since I said we're long overdue, you, you know, praise the Lord. So if you are also interested in doing that, they will leave. Pastor, you will need a lot of information on the screen that it's not popping up, so you need to help me. You know, would it, yeah. Yeah, if you want to do that, I don't know how they're going to do that. This is scan code. I'm not very techy, you know, so I guess you're going to use your phone to flash that, you know. So if you want to join the Hamptons UK Church, and it's not just London, it's going to be like a lot of cities in the UK. So, so even though it's outside London, it's a country city close to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, the last thing we'll do is to give our offerings. Praise the Lord. The last thing we'll do is to give an offering. Praise. And this envelope you can use to give. You have an envelope. We'll just give an envelope. And this is what I wanted to do today. What? Okay, yeah, we're going to give our offerings. This is what I'm going to do today. The, this is the envelopes, but of course, this is the UK, so a lot of people use transfers, you know. So we're going to put the account details on the screen. But this is what I want to do. Either you're using an envelope or you're doing cash. Can you just write something like a thanksgiving on your envelope and say, Lord, I'm thanking you for this, and this is my thanksgiving offering. I'm not asking you to buy a blessing. I'm saying to thank you because it's done. I'm asking to what? To thank you because it's done. So the details are there. Yeah, they're there. You know, um, I hope I have it correct. <laughs> you know, I have it correct. The details are there on the screen and you can go ahead and. Can we pray? So if you want to give your offerings, just go ahead and raise them up and we'll pray together. You know, and write, even if you're using the transfer, just write on the envelopes and say, Lord, I'm thanking you for this. I'm thanking you for this. It may be a stretch for you to give, it may be a normal offering. But just say, Lord, I'm thanking you for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Those just are giving. So can we go ahead and pray for this right now? Hallelujah. I want us to close because I'm looking at the time. I want us to close. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can we pray? Can we pray? All right. So we really would prefer that, you know, make it easy for all of us. A transfer is really better. You know, the offerings could be, could be challenging. So let's go ahead and pray. And I want to encourage you, tomorrow we have a fast from tomorrow to Wednesday. Um, every month is the next level fast, every first bit of the month. Hallelujah. And I want to thank all my friends that came again. Um, just by the way, it's a Valentine. Is that, is that who I think he is? Your friend? Oh, no, okay. Because I don't know him. Yeah. Amen. And of course, my friend, my friend walked in, Pastor Toby. Pastor Toby walked in, Pastor Bill Spark Nation. Thank you for coming. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And um, PK and PO, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So after the service, we'll have a question to pray for people. Can we go ahead and pray? All right, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you're good and you're kind. Thank you because of how you're blessed people today. And we're asking as people respond and giving their thanksgiving offerings and just worshiping you, you would acknowledge their sin as you did for Adol. Adol brought an offering that took recognition to you. I pray you acknowledge it and see your heart and respond to that which I'm thanking you for. No one can buy a blessing, but we can, out of what we have, appreciate you for what you've done. And this is what we're doing right now. Let the blessing be upon the givers. Thank you because people are going to come back and have stories of your faithfulness and goodness. They're going to share stories and tears of how much you've come through for them. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to pass the off. Uh, we're going to pass the off basket around, and uh, we're going to do that for about three or four minutes. And after that, we'll bring the service to a close. And I want to really thank all of the UK team. Just imagine we don't have a we don't have a church here. 
you know, you know, and all of our friends that made it happen, thank you so much for making this happen. Hey, let's stand on our feet and sing and shout and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah.
testimony, we want to send it. We want to send it. You know, the way no, all of the volunteers have made this happen, the way we can really just appreciate them is to share what the Lord is doing tonight. So share your testimony when you go back to the hospital, then go back and check. All of you that need, all of you that want to be prayed for personally, will you, after the service, just sit on the right hand side? Our pastors will guide you on how we will pray for you. But the third thing is this if you not following, I want to say some of you are still worshiping from home. We have our Sunday services, including today, that is online, and we have maybe between 50 and 100,000 people who will join our services online every Sunday. So I want to recommend to you that maybe that's something you want to consider on YouTube. You can always join the Sunday services. But if you want to be clung to any of our communities, any of our communities, so if you want to follow the social media, it's there. Please get your phones and follow all of you online. If you want to belong to any of the communities, they'll put the phone, phone numbers there, the telegram. Yeah, if you want to interest in the Harvesters Church in the UK, register, not just not in the UK, maybe Manchester, maybe somewhere. Please, those in the gallery, just hold on. I don't know if they're miracles out in the gallery or they're just you know, really excited, you know. Oh, wow. Okay, so they're just really excited in the gallery. So, so all of you that want to be part of it, just take a screenshot and snap it when we've got in touch with you. But we also have people in our family that don't belong to our church, and we're excited about them also. We call them the NLP community. So if you want to belong to the NLP community, it's there. Just next level community. It's a telegram group. The community will teach you how to pray, discipleship resources, things like that. The telegram group, you know, click, learn how to pray and get answers, weekly prayer guide, prayer counseling. It's a, you can and do that. And um, I think, yes, and there's a feedback form that you have. We will also know what we did good, what we did well, and what we could have done better. So the feedback and forms are there. Please just scan the code. And um, everything here is scan the code. That's really good. Yeah, praise the Lord. Everything just scan the code. You know, and we would, uh, we would, uh, we would uh, do that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So once again, thank you for coming. And I, de and I declare that the expectation you've come here with has become a testimony as you go In Jesus' name. Um, some years ago, I was graciously by Pastor introduced to Mr. Valentine. He runs this wonderful banking service We our churches is Excel. And I want to recommend it to everyone also here. So I wanted to say that it's very, very good. That's what our church uses. Amen. Hallelujah. So can we close? Can we say, say the grace? Are you blessed today? Are you blessed? I, I think you should share your experiences. Send me a WhatsApp, send me a Facebook message. Share your experiences. Let's turn up together and close the service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say with me, my expectation has become my testimony. The Lord has opened the door for me. God is good and kind to me. He has filled my life with the evidences of answer prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What happened to you? Praise the Lord. And please remember, as you are blessed now, and things change financially, change everywhere. You're blessed to be a blessing. There are people that are struggling financially around you, the people that you can help. When that, when that 100,000 pounds come, when that 1 million pounds come, write a check to someone that help them. Pay someone's school fees, set up a scholarship for people that you can help because the purpose is you're blessed to be what? A blessing. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. All the pastors are here. I can't thank you enough. I can't thank Pastor Dayo. Our, oh. Ministries, you know, he's here. George, George is our social media consultant. He also is here. And of course, all the ministers, all my, all, all the apostles, the prophets, the bishops, you know, the extraordinary men that are here, you know. Oh, those are Lagos people, I can tell. Praise the Lord. You know, those that came past the digital one, you know, they came from me from Lagos. And of course, my wife, I mean, Praise God. You know, hallelujah. You know, so it's. You know why you should 
appreciate how it's difficult to wake up. You know, my wife says you always wake me up every morning because literally I wake up between 3 and 4 a.m. every day, you know, to lead the prayers. So you're like, she told me that before. I said, please don't wake me up tomorrow. But there's no way I will get up and she doesn't wake up. You know, and you know, just being able to live through that, you know, and work with the kids and so because this way, probably one of our oldest members in the ministry, oldest, but now they moved to the UK several years ago and become pastors of the Redeemed Church. Amen. Thank you. Are we blessed today? Then Naomi Classic, that helped us play the music. Naomi, thank you. One of our senior worship leaders in Lagos also. And of course, the beautiful choir, our music director, Yomi Thomas. I can't make, keep mentioning names. We're going to have our meeting and just appreciate Yomi Thomas, Yomi O, you know, all of you, Benny. Happy Larry, all of you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys, Diola, Oye, Loye, Chinelo, so many people that helped us to do this. Thank you, God bless you. Can we close? Hallelujah. And surely, Amen. So if you want to be prepared, just sit down. They will organize us in three minutes and about three or four minutes to start the prayers. Thank you. God bless you.